This is Bewilderbeasts, an infotainment show dedicated to inspiring curiosity for all ages by investigating the ways animals intersect at humanity. I am not a historian, an ethologist, a researcher, a scientist, a zoologist, a trained audio engineer, or an expert in, well, anything. Y'all, I'm lucky if I can remember to put my clean laundry in the dryer before it gets funky. And while I make every effort to present things as accurately as I can with a fun flair, I'm going to mess up. And that's okay. I hope I've given you a nice place to jump off from on your own adventures into curiosity. Or at the very least, I've given you the key to win your next round of trivia. A disclaimer for today's episode. While this episode focuses on yet another wacky military experiment, this one involving using psychic powers to stop the hearts of goats, and does mention the inimitable... George Clooney in the movie The Men Who Stared at Goats based on this very real thing, it also does make many references to drugs, specifically LSD, and discusses a suicide. If that's something that you would prefer not to dive into today, go back and listen to some other episodes. May I recommend episode 25, the All Cats special? And I will see you next week. Hello and welcome to Bewilderbeasts. I'm your host, Melissa McHugh McGrath, still recording from the tiniest podcast studio closet outside of Boston, Massachusetts. For the last time. Today on Bewilderbeasts, oh, the military. Let's go. So y'all, this is the last regular recording I'm going to be making from the tiniest podcast studio closet outside of Boston, Massachusetts. My family and I are finally getting a chance to move, and we're going to Maine in early September. And while I have several episodes up and ready to go, we shouldn't miss a beat, I just wanted to commemorate this moment. I've lived here in this city of Somerville for 18 years, and that's a long, long time. I met my husband here, I had a kid here, I broke some bones here. And I enjoyed a great community. I stumbled into a hobby that became my career completely by accident in dog training. And I wrote a book about it. Here. All of it. It feels weird. I taught my last classes last night. And I'm really going to miss those students. The club where I've been teaching for like 12 years. My amazing colleagues. All of it. But we did also see where we're moving this week. And... It turns out there's some very angry beaches in Maine because Maine, the beaches fight back. (laughs) Um, There was a bookstore that had only murder mysteries and true crime called the Maine, uh, Mainly Murders, (laughs) which had a whole Maine section, which was two thirds Stephen King. And I really thought it would have been more. My kiddo was excited about a toy store on Main Street. So overall, we're feeling very good about this move, our new house, getting to build a fence so Captain this pod dog can zip around, eventual chickens. It's so close to the move that I'm actually genuinely more excited than stressed out. So all good things. So I'm going to make this short because this is a very long episode. So for the last time from inside the studio closet, let's get on with the show. On the surface, this is the funniest, most bizarre story. Let's start there. We've discussed failed CIA military top brass operations before. Remember the CIA spy kitty from the All Cat special last year? where we spent millions of dollars to turn a cat into a Franken-kitty, complete with a microphone in her ear and a wire in her tail as an antenna, all to blend in with the top-notch spy equipment and then let the cat wander around Russian bad guys. Why isn't this a movie? The idea was to let the cat wander around people who were meeting on park benches without being suspicious. The first time they deployed the Franken-kitty from their super inconspicuous spy van, the cat was instantly hit by a taxi cab and did not collect any intel. Nailed it! So we've had some people write in about this tangentially related story about the time the United States military decided to train, <clears throat> sorry, give the army buttloads of LSD. Disclaimer, I may not know how to take LSD, so 
Uh, it's not a drug I've taken, not a drug I'd recommend without medical aid, but I'm pretty certain it's not taken by the butt or dosed by the load. But the CIA and the U.S. military at different points in history have decided to give people LSD with the intention to get them to walk through walls, create astral projections of themselves across the world to spy on Russians. Basically, imagine a holographic Tupac, but without the holographic jujitsu, it would be like um, a military officer sending his spirit across the globe to spy. And when that wasn't enough, they decided that they would try to take it up a notch kill the enemy with their minds. I mean, it would be fewer guns, which is good. Still death, which is bad. But that might explain why this particular project was called Project Jedi. But you can't start with just killing people. No, you got to build up to that, right? So they needed something easier for them to kill than humans and something that they could form less of an attachment to than dogs. So they landed on goats. Clearly, the military did not know how goats work. <laughs> These sturdy little buggers are not easy in any stretch of the imagination. And their eyes, if you haven't looked into the eye of a goat, it's like a cat's eye, which is famously slitted going up and down. But instead of going up and down, it looks like somebody turned it sideways. And it's really trippy. There's a line going horizontally across the middle of their eyeball. It's shaky. It's so trippy to look at. I mean, not as trippy as taking a buttload of LSD to mind meld a baba but still pretty trippy. Listener, you'd be shocked to hear that this did not work. But first, let's back up. Our story actually starts with Lieutenant Colonel Jim Channon, a United States soldier who had served in Vietnam. After this horrific war, people were looking for different ways to engage in conflict. Out of the ashes of this international trauma that we are responsible for, His idea of new military super soldiers to be organized along new age lines started to get a little attention. By thinking outside the box and not looking down the barrel of a gun, Lieutenant Colonel Shannon thought that maybe by reaching for the impossible, like training the human body to configure its atoms to walk through other atoms, like say, a wall or a door, or maybe projecting an astral plane, Remember soldier hologram-esque projection of an actual human spirit to act as a super spy? So even though he knew that these things were not possible, he wanted to shoot for the stars and hopefully stumble upon something else along the way. Something useful, something great, something realistic. So for 20 years, a handful of black ops soldiers, the military, actually experimented on psychic warfare. They suffered bruised noses from trying to walk through these walls, believing beyond every piece of evidence that they could bend wedding rings with their mind. But it was really just some guy running to the bathroom to get the ring wet and going, Oh my god, I I did it while nobody was watching. (laughs) I mean, David Blaine and Chris Angel probably did the exact same thing when they were like five and look where they ended up. So I'm sure it's fine. And let's be real. The military probably weren't the only people in the room taking these drugs. It was the 70s. So in fact, starting as early as 1948, the CIA started to study LSD. And up until the 1950s, the CIA used LSD and this compound called red oil marijuana, basically a super high concentrate, pun intended, to see what these bad boys or drugs could do. Take them out for a test spin. Maybe they could help the spy achieve a different plane of self or what the CIA was hoping for to be a functional truth serum. They used so many drugs in the 50s that ahead of their annual Christmas party, the CIA HR department, or someone, had to circulate a memo that effectively said, um, please don't spike the punch with class one narcotics and please keep your gifts to under $10 for the Yankee swap. In 1953, biochemist Frank Olson, a civilian who worked with the CIA on some projects, stumbled into MKUltra. Y'all, my search history is going to get me in a lot of trouble this week. MKUltra was the big daddy project that was going to use drugs like LSD as a block against mind control from the Russians, the Chinese, and the North Koreans. Typically without the consent of the people who were slipped the LSD mickey and were used for study. Apparently, Frank Olson, after witnessing horrible tests on humans who thought that they were being given medication for the common cold, in a twist, it wasn't LSD this time, but the unsuspecting subjects were instead given nerve gas. It was devastating, haunting, and as traumatic as one might think. 
Very shortly after this, Frank Olson was invited to a summit with other biochemists. At this gathering, you know, a light gathering with lots of great food, maybe some parcheesi, a bottle of Contro, he was told that he and the other members were drugged with LSD and, well, let's just see where this party goes, shall we? Frank Olson was reportedly extremely upset that he was drugged with LSD without consenting to it. I mean, that's reasonable. And after this, he decided that he was going to quit his position. This was a bridge too far. Already planning on leaving after the nerve gas test, he talked with his wife and kids and decided to leave the CIA. But a week after his resignation, and nine days after his spiked drink, Frank Olson plunged to his death from a 13th floor hotel room window in New York City. He was quickly examined, buried, and ruled a suicide. But decades later, in 1975, the CIA divulged that they had been dosing people with LSD willy-nilly and that Frank Olson, nine days before his death, had also been drugged without his knowledge of this powerful drug, which likely resulted in his suicide. Olson had become a guinea pig, and the CIA had said, quote, but this was to help him. Nothing to see here. No more drugs for us. We learned our lesson. Pinky promise. We're good. You know, with their fingers crossed behind their backs. Listener, they did not learn their lesson, and it's widely theorized that Frank Olson was actually murdered due to what he had seen and knew, and his pushback was just a bridge too far. And after all these years, this is still an ongoing investigation. But we'll circle back to Frank Olson in a bit. It's also a weird note that in 1977, the New York Times reported that a magician was brought into the CIA during their LSD escapades to explain sleight of hand, human manipulation, etc., etc. This magician was paid 3,000 buckaroos to contract with the CIA on matters like how solid, liquid, and gaseous substances like a buttload of acid maybe, could be secretly delivered to individuals without their knowledge. Hmm. So when Frank Olson died, magician Maholan's address and his initials were found in Robert V. Lashbrook's wallet. Who's Dr. Lashbrook? Oh, he was the CIA employee who was escorting Dr. Frank Olson on the night that he died. Hmm. Hold all that in your head. I know it's a lot. But think of everything that the CIA just did that I just explained the military also knowingly, or maybe unknowingly did, but with fewer holiday parties gone awry and way more goats. (laughs) Four years later, the United States Army, not the CIA, because remember, they're done with LSD, Pinkie Pie promise. Why are we still talking about this? We're done. Seriously, my fingers are crossed behind my back, but I totes mean it. The Army ended up taking some pages out of the 1950s LSD trials. And they thought, sure, what could go wrong? In 1979, the same year that Star Wars emerged on the scene, and two years after it came out that the CIA was tripping donkey ears through the 50s, the Stargate Project was established at Fort Meade in Maryland, not to be confused with the early 1990s science fiction film of the same name, or the animated series in the late 1990s by the same name. This Stargate project intended to discover if humans could use their minds and paranormal phenomena to improve military operations. You know, real-life Marvel movie X-Men type stuff, but the U.S. Army and without the radioactive spider bites. Ow, ow, ow! Guys in black ops tried to walk through walls. Use these things instead of guns in war, hopefully on the way to the moon to find something great. But the only thing great that came out of this series of experiments was the now famous slogan, Be All You Can Be. Now there was a spinoff project to Stargate. Walking through walls, astro projection, remember holographic pop star of your choice, blah, blah, blah. The adjacent program to walking through walls was the Goat Lab program. This is one that you might be familiar with if you recall the movie The Men Who Stared at Goats. (laughs) This was the name that many people have heard of comes from a book written by the journalist John Ronson, who famously dives deep into the waters of conspiracy, the weird, the bizarre, the unusual, with a typically empathetic grace, humor, and seriousness. Y'all, I like the cut of his jib. According to John's book, special forces soldiers tried to use their psychic powers up against a powerful foe. Depleted goats at Fort Bragg. (laughs) The idea was to use the human mind to stare into the souls of goats reach in and just 
stop their hearts with their minds. Why the goats? Well, as I said before, you can't just jump into mind-murdering people. That's just rude. There must be a process. The military apparently thought, well, rabbits were way out of the question. That'd be too easy. They actually sometimes just keel over when they think they're going to be eaten. It's actually a really great defense mechanism if you're a rabbit. Predator comes, the rabbit knows it's done for, spontaneous heart attack. That's by design because that's much better and kinder when you're on that rung of the food chain than being torn apart by a predator. So the military needed something easier than people, but not too easy to mind murder. Dogs. But when it came down to it, the military looking dogs in the eyes, those sad, sad puppy dog eyes, and realizing, uh, no. But as said before, the military decided on goats because the suspicion was that they would be harder to be attached to, which is why they are still used today in medical training for field training in some branches of the United States military. The Department of Defense's medical school has used shot, blown up, stabbed, ripped off limbs of goats, and believe it or not, even more traumatic injuries on live goats until 2013. Several Marines have spoken out very recently about this traumatic and terrible practice as late as 2017, but they had to remain blurred in reporting to protect their identities. Some branches stopped in 2018, but the practice is still being used in a scaled back manner in some branches of the military, meaning this is still happening. Up to 8,500 goats are anesthetized, harmed, patched up, and then euthanized every year for field training. But remember George Clooney, guys. The movie's all about the silly military. Oh, those antics. So yes, the greatest military force on the planet removed the voice boxes of goats and established the goat lab. And it turns out taking out voice boxes was the least bad thing done to goats in the military. But a few good men stepped forward as they thought that they could do the impossible. Painlessly kill a goat with their brain power alone. One such man a martial arts instructor, spiritual healer, and the man who convinced the military he could train men to do the impossible, Guy Savelli, he had claimed that he had killed a goat with his mind. Though, no one saw it. There's no video. There's no proof that this ever happened. And there was another man named Glenn Wheaton. Here's what journalist John Ronson, author of The Men Who Stared at Goats, said to NPR superhost Guy Raz about Glenn Wheaton. Quote, Glenn Wheaton, who started the whole story for me, I mean, I knew he was part of this unit, this secret unit called Project Jedi. I didn't really know anything about it, and he explained that it was a series of levels. He said level one was teaching the soldier how to eat nuts and grains for a month. And I said, okay, what's level two? He said level two was invisibility. Well, is there like a level 1.5 to get from eating nuts to being invisible? Like maybe... Escape tactics, in case it doesn't work, scrubbing toilets with a toothbrush, something. But wait, there's more. The professional who went in to assess military projects and shut down projects like Project Jedi, the guy who essentially killed this project after 20 years, was a magician named Ray Hyman. That's right, y'all. This is a double magician episode. (laughs) Lucky you. Ray Hyman calls himself a skeptic, but he was also a magician. A magician took down the astral plane projection secret forces who tried to stop goats' hearts with psychic powers for the United States Army. (sighs) There's a lot to unpack here. On its face, it's really funny. And of course, a street-hustling magician took out the special psych ops forces. But we can't unpack any of this until we also tie in Barney the Dinosaur. Because, of course, Barney the Dinosaur. How does this tie in? In short, the book The Men Who Stared at Goats jumps to present day, where the events of the psychic ops military men are connected to Abu Ghraib. Oh, the early 2000s, where the United States military posed with the Iraqi prisoners in very compromised positions, tortured and committed hundreds of human rights violations. It was a horrible look for the United States. There is no way to make this part funny, enjoyable, and I'm not even going to try. It was a terrible time for prisoners of American soldiers and a stain on the United States military. 
The media discussed these atrocities, but they also sunk their teeth into the more bizarre parts, the pieces of the story that are admittedly much easier to talk about. The part where the theme song to one of the most popular kids shows of the late 1990s was used as torture for prisoners of Abu Ghraib. It's so easy to laugh at. I did, because when you're laughing at I Love You, You Love Me, the Barney theme song, it's easier to gloss over the horrible, terrible, no good, very bad things that our military did to other people. It was the joke of the year. People couldn't stop laughing about the fact that the song I Love You, You Love Me was used as torture. And I have heard this song. It absolutely could be used as torture. Imagine playing Baby Shark on repeat a bazillion times until your prisoner is ready to tell you everything, including their 8th grade crush on Mrs. Jenkins, the math teacher, bank account info from their grandma. But here's the thing. Barney the Purple Dinosaur. Jokes, jokes, jokes. But torture. And according to the podcast SpyCast, it's easy to slide something like that into the news that people can focus on, distract them, make fun of, make light of, while ignoring the bigger, more serious, more painful, more difficult thing to look at. That we were torturing human beings with waterboarding, electricity, sleep deprivation, darkness, bright lights, and 90s kid show theme songs at Abu Ghraib. And John Ronson knows what we know here on this show. It's easy to present the funny story so people talk about it and get over it. But the truly darker story is usually underneath. So these men who stared at goats and the related men who thought that they could project their spirits to places around the world really thought they were doing the bidding of the military on their own in secret for 20 years. Did they think that they could really do this? So what's the real story? The truth is this. The truth is this black ops mission without any money. The team had to buy their own coffee and couldn't get basic repairs done in the building because they technically didn't exist on paper. After 20 years of not existing and joining this ragtag group of people after Vietnam looking to change things, looking for a better way to win at war, looking for the meaning of trauma after Vietnam, these men were desperate. The military was desperate. The world was desperate. And I'd argue it still is. But despite funding being too high, but not high enough to get these men a more decent cup of joe, they were cut. But not before John Ronson the author of this book, had a lucky encounter, a moment in time where he was able to ask a single question to Ray Hyman. Remember, the magician skeptic who ultimately reported that enough was enough? What else did you see in that room? John said that that was the luckiest question he's ever asked, because it gave him a foothold into what would eventually uncover the entire story. Ray Hyman said that he saw two men, and now John Ronson, A reporter and a journalist and a curious fella had two names. Two names that would eventually lead him to ask, WWGCD, what would George Clooney do in the eventual movie of this book of the same name that I have to write? But according to Ray Hyman, the man who investigated and eventually shut down the goat situation at Fort Bragg, but not the horrific stuff happening, just the woo-woo stuff that was the butt of the joke that went on for too long, that Ray Hyman... He not only became a founding member of what is now CSI, not the TV show, the real freaking crime scene investigations unit, who started off as a magician, which some might think is just another silly detail, and it kind of is, that's why I keep bringing it up, but who is a magician, a good magician other than someone who knows how to use the human psyche against them and how to manipulate people to believe things that aren't real, See also Penn and Teller and Houdini, who all believed in disproving the fake while providing an illusion that leads everyone to know they're being tricked. How did he do that? See also the magician in the 50s contracted by the CIA who may have actually helped teach the CIA the sleight of hand necessary to slip some California sunshine into the punch bowl at the holiday party before Peggy from HR decided to put the kibosh on that little maneuver. This is a respectable outfit. We only secretly drug people off-site, thank you very much. Peggy was done with this paperwork and had no time for any of this. But Ray speaks openly about the misinformation effect. And one look at social media today, anti-science rhetoric, conspiracy theories, misinformation is alive and very well, and a huge part of the human condition. It has affected every single aspect of this story. 
So let's look at the story from a slightly different perspective, one that motivated these men to do things, to believe in things that could be real for 20 years, to ignore the facts of the case that they undoubtedly could not. The misinformation effect affected these men who believed that at least a little and what they were doing was good to the point that they ignored all evidence to the contrary. Because it's harder to believe that you wasted 20 years in a crumbling office. The belief and the hope to change the military for the better, to stop shooting at other humans is something we would all want. Well, I mean, except for psychopaths, but you can listen to true crime shows for that. They wanted something better in the hours, months, and years after Vietnam, and that was palpable. And they didn't do it, so if they just tried harder, if they trained harder, if they worked harder, all things learned in the military. If they LSD'd harder, maybe this would pan out. And they had to believe that this could work, that shooting for the moon wasn't a mission to hit something on the way to an impossible target. The moon was the target. Turning back and saying it failed was never an option for these men. They believed in it too much, and they wanted this to fix things so much, and they were told they could walk through walls if they just tried harder. Really walking through walls became the target for some of these men. Not maybe inventing x-ray glasses. Really killing goats with their minds became the target because studying how men could believe they could kill goats with their mind and using that manipulation couldn't be part of this at all, right? You can't use that kind of manipulation on the field. Or can you? If you can't kill the goat, you know you were played and no one wants to be played. You have to be right. You can't be wrong. You've put in too much. I wonder how far the military thought they could push. And if you repeat something enough, the misinformation effect, it can become true, gospel, real, at least to the believer. Well, what does Ray Hyman say that this misinformation can do? It can spread so easily. All it takes is for someone to repeat, repeat, repeat. Human nature depends on it. I have fallen for this recently. As a dog trainer of 17 years, I heard once and cannot for the life of me source it that dogs licking things releases serotonin, the happy chemical, so it's good for them to lick things like peanut butter stuffed Kongs, and it can help them with anxiety. I've heard doctors in related fields of animal behavior say this as gospel. I've seen it so many times it must be true. And yet, noted skeptic and fantastic dog nerd Dr. Alexander Horowitz, author and admittedly my dog sci girl crush because I want to be her when I grow up, hi, I'm 40, asked a very simple question on Twitter in July of 2021. Quote, we all say it, but can anyone point to the data, the science, the paper, the literature on this? That dog's licking releases serotonin? Crickets, yo. It's not there. It's something we've heard to the point that it's just true, but there's no evidence. I've been telling clients this for 17 years. Whoopsie. And while it undoubtedly helps, we don't have the actual data to back it up, but this effect really comes into its own with bigger untruths. Birthers. People who believed that President Barack Obama was not a United States citizen because before his campaign... Donald Trump, obviously now playing the long game, planted the seed. He wasn't born here. And people repeated it. Then the media repeated it so much that people watching started to think that there was a nugget of truth. It took such a hold over 10 years that when Trump said, it's not true, and President Obama himself showed his birth certificate for evidence, people believed it was fake. Cult groups like QAnon uses social media to push conspiracies that are so loosely threaded, but if you just repeat the connections enough, it feels like there's some validity to it. So many connections that millions of people believed, truly believed, that there were horrible things happening to kids in the basement of a pizza shop, and despite a man shooting an assault rifle at the pizza shop to, quote, save the kids, upon finding the place had no kids and zero basements still refused to admit the conspiracy theory was wrong. He denied it was fake news, even though he was standing there with no basement and no kids. 
once you're in on the conspiracy to the point where you can bring a gun to a pizza shop, no amount of evidence will sway you. You're in too deep and there's no going back. The misinformation effects show that people, smart people, people from every walk of life could believe something that was said a million times over actual evidence to the contrary. Because belief in something is very human and we can believe it with all of our might. It's the one thing that can counter evidence, good evidence. It leads people who have watched some shows on Animal Planet to come at actual doctors of wildlife biology and degrade their expertise and start every interaction with, well, actually, as Terry Pratchett said, a lie can run around the world before the truth can get its shoes on. I truly believe that the men who stared at goats, the men who looked at walls and thought they could walk through them, needed a perfect storm of science and pseudoscience, trauma, high Vietnam War, and the hope to do something better to the point that they were willing and able to sit through coffee-less days. Oh, the horror. Crumbling infrastructure and an abject hope and belief that someone would be able to bend a spoon, break a ring, walk through a wall. It's just atoms. And if you train hard enough and believe enough, you too can kill a goat with your mind. That the 44th president wasn't valid. That watching Bear Grylls makes you an expert on bear behavior. And that your friend from high school who's selling Etsy soap knows more about vaccines than doctors, researchers, and infectious disease specialists. And our entire world just went through several traumas. Our Earth is in trouble, and we're still very scared of things, big things, pandemic things. So of these things... Some of these things are totally valid, but some of these things are repeated misinformation to keep people scared to believe in the lie, to take their eyes off the prize with laughter, with fear, and using strong emotion so we have difficulty finding the truth, which is hardly ever as juicy as we want to believe, unless it is. We are human and we need hope. Some of us will grasp to science, to data, and do the best we can with evidence. And some will grasp at astral projections and belief in walking through walls. Belief their bodies are somehow better equipped to kill a virus that has killed millions of people in the last 18 months than vaccines. Belief is a hell of a drug, and we need it. But like all drugs, too much will do more harm than good. What makes conspiracies take their first breath, come alive, become real, is while the rest of the world stops thinking after the joke, Barney the Dinosaur, men killing goats with their minds, or stops thinking after the feel-good part of the story. Look back to the episode over the border collie who inherited $5 million. When we stop looking because the joke is over, or the feel-good part of the story is done, that's where the seeds of misinformation can hide, or worse, the truth. Check this. People believe the Earth is flat despite evidence because, ha <laughs> ha oh, well... Maybe. Then it's not a joke anymore. It's easy to hide the truths and the seeds of doubt just as easily behind the joke because for so many of us, laughter is a trauma response. Hi, my name's Melissa, and inappropriate laughter is my trauma response. But some people, the good ones, keep digging beyond the funny headline, like John Ronson. Barney was trauma, that torture and inhumane treatment of humans and we have to face it, not laugh at it like a late night show host. The flip of the coin is there are people who buy into the lie of searching for something better, like the men who stared at goats, the men who thought they could see into Russian spy camps by projecting their astral selves like a Marvel character to save soldiers from the fate they all had to endure in the worst war ever. The only reason this could go on for as long as it did was because they had to believe in something better. And that's how cults happen. Like Hale-Bopp. Or the storming of the U.S. Capitol. That's how ideas can get out of control. Like police and presidents who feel that they are above the law because they believe it. And we let them. And that's how people fall in line with blind faith and the hope for something better that what's being done is always right, like that of the U.S. Army and the CIA. And I'm saying this as a kid of the Army. The Army should have found ways to help these men, not give them a false North Star to follow blindly for 20 years. Not hide them in crumbling rooms. They should have helped these men, 
not exploited their story as a joke when they realized that they biffed it. These men had something to offer, and they would have done anything to help soldiers. But instead, the army gave them goats and a shooting star to wish on, and dragged it out for 20 years and left them as the butt of the joke while more walls crumbled around them. The goats ended up in a worse job, and the world laughed because you can't laugh and call something out at the same time. And maybe the army learned that with these men. They certainly knew it by the time of Abu Ghraib. These men could have done awesome things with that hope, and they could have absolutely done more for the military using their wishful thinking and skills. They might have even come up with a peaceful way to help in wartime, but the army hung them out and learned something at their expense. That you can hide horrible things in the shadows of jokes. Now magicians aren't the only comeback in this story. LSD is coming back too, with Buddy's ecstasy and ketamine for post-traumatic stress disorder, something Frank Olson for sure would have been dealing with in the 1950s had he not suffered his tragic death. So instead of being used as a weapon or a means to help super psychic spies, mind-altering drugs are now being used to heal, which could be a good thing. Another circle back? Though we might never get a resolution, what really happened to Frank Olson? There's strong evidence that he didn't just leap to his death nine days after being drugged with LSD against his will, but instead may have been assassinated by the CIA. And that sounds very conspiracy-like, right? But there's evidence, not circular evidence, evidence, evidence. The very agency who dragged him into this whole thing had a whole lot to lose. And the sad irony being that the work that was being done now, the very drug he took nine days before his death, may have been used to help him had he still been alive today. In the last circle back, <laughs> the goats. If you want to help these trauma goats, visit pcrm.org. Contact your representatives and your senators and make your voice heard. More info is in the link in the show notes. It is important to call things out that are provably wrong. Listen to experts, not YouTube. And be critical of where information is sourced. Because while belief is a great crutch to get us on our way, if we value belief over evidence or stop at the joke, we miss the truth hiding behind the goats. Thank you for joining me today on Bewilderbeasts. And this story was a beast, so there will be tons of links in the show notes. So I hope you like this one. It started with goats and it just kept getting pulled in weird directions. Next week's episode will be much, much lighter, whatever it ends up being. I'm going to record that one in Maine, probably about a month from now. So I literally have no idea what it's going to be. It's going to be a surprise for all of us. It's cool. I like surprises. So if you like this show and you want some extra episodes just for you, check out the Patreon. It's quick, and for as little as a dollar a month, you get all the bonus content. There's some episodes in there already, including a real-life Pikachu and a moth that Evolution thought, well, hmm, these peacocks got beautiful wings. I'm going to make this guy look like literal poop. Oh, Evolution. So check out Bewilderbeast Pod on Patreon. Check out the tiers over there. And uh, this episode has gone on forever and ever, so without further ado... I'm Melissa McHugh McGrath with Mud Stuff Media. Now go get curious. I got today's information from a very long list of sources, so here we go. Wikipedia on the men who stared at goats, johnronson.com, Every Little Thing, a great little podcast, Spycast, Bullseye with Jesse Thorne, his interview with John Ronson, military.com on the Goat Lab, abcnews.go.com, LA Times, Wikipedia on Jim Channon, The New Earth Army, westhawaiitoday.com on Jim Channon's obituary, npr.org, Wikipedia on Frank Olson, wired.com on MK Ultra, wired.com also on the Army's acid tests, The New York Times on how they hired a magician, NBC San Diego on the Marines speaking out about using live animals in trauma training, and PCRM.org, where you can go to see if you can help some of these goats. Intro music is by Dan Leibowitz, and interstitial music is by MK2. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your curious friends. Send me a note at BewilderBeastPod if you're so inclined, and tell me how you like the show, or tell me the things that you'd like to hear. All episodes are available at BewilderBeastPod.com or wherever you listen to podcasts. 
That's it for now. So for the last time from the tiniest studio closet outside of Boston, Massachusetts, I'll see you next week. That is if the CIA doesn't get me first. <laughs> Bye.